Welcome back everyone, my name is Arvind Reddy and in this video we'll talk about how to get a job as a fresher in IT industry. So let me give you 7 steps which will help you to get a job. Now initial steps are common, everyone knows about it. The last 3 is very important for me. So let's start with the first one which everyone knows and that is you need a good resume. Now when you say you have your a CV or resume, you have all your data, right? You write everything about you and that's very important. Now one of the way people get the resume is they go to Google and they search for a good resume or they search for a good CV. So what they do is they change the data. So example, if I copy something off from the internet, uh, I will change the name, I will change my address, I will change my hobbies. Uh, so if you say you like football, I like cricket, so I will change those things. But what if I say that's not the only thing which a recruiter or the company you are applying for will look for. Now think about this, when you apply for a job, you're not the only one who is applying, right? We have thousands of people applying for the same post. And the moment you say you are applying, of course you have to submit your resume. So there's no only one resume there, right? We have thousands of resume. So as a HR or as a recruiter, what I will do is I will look at those resume and I will try to filter it out. So of course we have an initial filtering. I will pick up only those candidates which are promising. So your resume is the first step towards you, right? Towards your job. So it should be good. Now it, when you say it should be good, how will you make it good? So the best way to do that is have a personalized resume. Yes, you'll be having all your personal details. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying it should be different from others. Of course, right? We are individuals. We have our identity. We have different identity. We have different hobbies. We have different way of thinking. So put those things in your resume, how you are different from others. So that is very important. So in fact, in your resume, you should put one important thing, which we will discuss that later. But yeah, so that's create a personalized resume. Okay, don't be, don't just copy paste a resume from the internet. Even they will see, you know, you're not even working on your resume. Uh, that means you are lazy. So they might skip you in the first one itself, in the first go itself. The second one, and very important. So when you, let's say, once you are shortlisted for, for your resume, uh, they will call you for most important thing, which is the technical round. Of course, every company have different set of rounds, but one thing is common. The moment you say you are applying as a software engineer, or as a programmer, they will ask you one thing, the technical questions, right? Now this is not mobile related technology I'm talking about. They will not ask you how GPS works and all those things. They will be very specific for their specific post. Example, if you're applying for Java job, if you're applying for .NET, if you're applying for, let's say testing, if you're applying for a database, based on whatever profile you're applying for, they will ask you those questions. But most of the interviews, doesn't matter is it for a programmer or tester or database, they will have one topic which is common and that is data structures. Now, it doesn't matter. So just go to Google and search for interview questions for programmers. You know, first question would be data structures and last question would be data structures. Okay, maybe, maybe not all the questions from data structures, but most of them will be from data structures. Now in data structures and algorithms, there are so many topics you should be familiar with, you know, uh, stack, queues, how those things works, how a linked list works, and then algorithms as well. Some of the algorithms which are very old, which are very famous, and some of which are new as well. So you, you have to practice those algorithms. So in the interview, they might ask you to write an algorithm by yourself. So you can just, you know, customize those algorithms which are already there, and you can have your own one. Uh, so that's what you can do in the interviews, but then they will ask you questions based on data structures and algorithms. There's one important thing. When you say you are preparing yourself for a technical interview, don't just read stuff. You know, a lot of people, uh, they go to Google, they, they read the content. Uh, what if I say is, when you read something, you feel good about it. But the moment you go for the interview, you have to answer it, right? You have to speak. You have to also practice that, right? So in, in front of me, not just practicing your, uh, tell me about yourself, you have to also practice about uh, the technical question. So ask a question and answer it by yourself. Maybe you can take the help of your friend, they will ask you a question and you will answer. Something like mock interviews, right? So you can try that, okay? So don't just read the answers, also practice. That's very important, right? You have to make an impact there. You'll be having 10 seconds, 20 seconds to answer the question. It should be impactful. The third one, certifications. In fact, you know, uh, when I was in my college at that point in somewhere around 2008, certifications were very important, you know? So people used to say, hey, go for Java certification, or go for .NET certification. But at this point, the problem is we have so many international certifications, we have so many local certifications. In fact, thanks to online learning, uh, we have a lot of institutes or a lot of online portal with, they provide you certificate. But the question is, is it valid? So when you say certification, yes, certifications are important, but only valid certifications. 
Uh, so let's say if you are getting certified from Microsoft, it makes sense. But if you are getting certified from a local institute, it may not work because all big companies, they when they see the certificate, it might be fake certificate, right? So you can go to any institute, they, you can pay the money and they will give you certificate. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so if you are planning for certification, make sure it is international and it should be recognized. Okay, quick recap, you need a good resume, you need to prepare for technical interview and certifications, only valid one. Now, if you talk about this three, everyone knows about it, right? And we do prepare for this stuff. In fact, your colleges as well, they will help you in this top three. The next four are very important. The first one is you have to be master of one. When you are completing your graduation, maybe you're, degree, you're doing your four-year degree or three-year degree, we learn different subjects, right? We have around 25, 30 subjects and we learn everything, right? We learn C, C++, Java, networking. Maybe if you have topic like AI or IoT, you learn everything. But the question is, are you a master of one? Because nowadays things are changing, right? Companies are looking for people who can actually work, right? It's not that they will give you training, they might, but then they want people who can actually work on the technology. Let's say if I'm hiring you as a full stack developer, I'm expecting you to know everything, right? Yes, I will give you some help. I will provide you with some resources, but you should be able to work. Uh, so that's one thing you need to be master of one. Yes, you should learn everything, jack of all, but you have to be master of one. So let's say if you call yourself as Java developer, you have to be master of Java. You know, all the basic fundamentals I'm talking about and maybe framework will do. Uh, if you say you are good with testing, you should be good with testing. You should not like, hey, I know testing, but I have to learn. That's not the case uh, they're expecting now. So if you have to be master of one, yes, there are different type of companies available. Uh, some company only look for people who know stuff or data structures algorithms will do for them because they will give you training and they will make sure that in one year you become master but then on the other hand we have startups we have product based companies they are looking for candidates they can start working from day one because they don't have much time to train you uh, they don't want to waste the resources training you they are expecting people who can directly work and fortunately we have so many people they are a master of one so they get chance you, you will you may not get a chance if you're not master of one the next one is very important, which is networking. This is something I feel a college should take care of, you know. In your college time itself, your professors or your syllabus should have this subject of networking. I'm not talking about computer networks here. I'm talking about human networks. The thing is, nowadays, yes, you can go for campus placement, you can go for off-campus placements, but there's one another way you can get a job is through networking on LinkedIn. Not just LinkedIn, you can use Facebook, you can use WhatsApp if you know some people. You know, there are so many people on LinkedIn. They are continuously searching for candidates who can work on projects. The only thing is they're not able to get proper candidates. I'm not saying we don't have good people in the market. It's just that uh, they're not easily gettable. But if you are good at something, make your profile better. So go on LinkedIn, create a good profile, let them know what you are good at. Don't give any uh, fake technologies there, but mention whatever you know and they will search you, right? So create a good profile. Maybe you can add them. You can send a message to the recruiters on LinkedIn. Uh, so that's how you can get a job. Yes, it is difficult. Who said getting a job is easy? It's just that you have to do it. You can't simply say, hey, I have done my graduation. I have my LinkedIn account and people will contact you. They might, but what if you do it? So you can also send the messages, right? So that's one way you can get a job. So increase your network, you can do in person as well. In fact, one of the way is you can find referrals. Uh, so maybe if, if your senior is working for a company, uh, you know, ask him, do, do we have any vacancies for freshers there? That's one thing you can go for. So the first one is be a master of one and second one is networking, build your network. Now last two is very, very important. The next one is projects. Of course, right, when you are saying you have done your graduation in software engineering or some computer related field, you need to have projects with you. Now, I'm not saying you should be having Java project, Python project, it can be anything. Example, let's say if you're excited about IoT, simply saying that I'm excited about IoT will not make any sense. You know, you have to build IoT project. If you say you love machine learning, you have to build something. If you say you are good with web designing, you need to have something ready to show people, right? It's not just one project, multiple projects from different domains. So let's say uh, one project is into web development, one project in Android. You have to experiment with yourself as well. So yes, you should be master of one, but build multiple projects and it will give you a clear cut idea of what is exactly happening in the industry. 
So you can showcase your talent there. So let's say if you want to get into uh, mobile development, show multiple apps. Now, how will you show these apps? So what you will do is make sure initially all your projects should be open source. Otherwise, you can also build projects for NGOs or for your friends, for your families, make projects for them. And those projects, upload it on GitHub. So while sending your resume, that's the important part, right? While sending your resume, you have to also send your GitHub link. And that's how you will let them know that you are actually interested in software development, right? It's not just about money, it's about software development. You are excited about developing something. So that's one thing you can do. So make sure that all your projects are on some repository. You okay, cannot just GitHub, you can also use GitLab, your choice. Okay, that's the project part. What do you think the last one would be? In fact, if you are following this channel from a long time, I have said this multiple times, internships, very, very important. You know, in the earlier days, certifications was making sense, getting good marks in college makes sense. But now what makes sense is internships. Uh, yes, if you get good marks, that's great. If you have your own projects, that's great. But when you do internship, you are working on someone else's requirement because when you build your own project, you have your own requirements, you have your own deadlines. But in internship, you are working for someone else. And that's where you will understand how to work in a group, how to understand someone else's requirement, how to deploy the project on cloud or how to talk to your client, everything. That's the real power. And I'm not saying you have to do internship, which is paid one. You can go for free internship as well. You know, a lot of companies, they are looking for interns, but you should be flexible working for free as well. You know, I don't understand why people expect money when you're doing internship. Yes, you can expect that after one year of working for a company. Uh, you know, in future, you will earn a lot of money. But initially, you have to always work to learn something. You can earn later. Uh, so do internships, maybe for a small company, big company. Yes, there's one important thing when you join the internship. So before joining internship, know everything about the company. What is their vision? What is your profile there? You don't have to be office boy for them. Okay, so you should be doing the stuff which you want to do. Yes, they will give you some extra stuff, but that's fine. They should give you the actual work as well, right? So that's one thing you have to check next. Maybe when you're doing an internship, also ask them, uh, can I convert my internship into a full-time job? If they say, you know, depend upon your performance, that's, that's okay. But if they say no, think about it. Because most of the time when you convert your internship into a full-time job, that's excitement because you know the uh, company, you know your profile, and it will be awesome when you get a job there. Now, there's something, these seven steps will help you to get a job. Again, I'm not saying it will be easy. It's just that this is what you have to do in this year, right? So let me repeat, just to go for a quick recap. The first one is have a personalized resume. Next, prepare yourself for the interviews, not just uh, technical, but you can think about all the rounds. If you're thinking about certification, make sure you get a valid certification. You have to be jack of all, but master of one. Build network, maybe you can use LinkedIn or Facebook build projects and do internships, not just one, multiple internships. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Now, if you want to get more info about Telesco or Navin Reddy, you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Bye-bye.